Hi, let me introduce you to Jenna Farming. I am Sivam Krish. Let's start with sketching. Sketching is a way we explore design possibilities. We still sketch our ideas with pencil and paper, as many generations of designers have done before us. We only use computers when we are somewhat sure of our design. Often, this is at the tail end of the design process. This is because CAD programs cannot help us now to explore designs. CAD programs were initially designed to help automate drafting in 2D. We have now moved on to 3D, but we still use computers as tools to represent what we design, not necessarily to design. But this is changing. The next stage is to get computers to generate designs. We can now use its capacity to explore thousands of designs, more designs than you can ever sketch or even imagine. There's nothing new in this. This is how we were designed. Nature has been designing this way for billions of years. The entire spectrum of life on Earth was generated using a design process that Charles Darwin discovered 150 years ago. Thanks to later developments in genetics, nature's design process is less and less of a mystery now. Nature first creates random variations. Now, this random variation has been somewhat of a red flag to designers because designers feel that their processes are not random, but they forget something, that what matters most is not the generation, but the selection. The biological designs that pass on their gene are those that succeed in this very tough test. I guess you can call this test life. It starts with successful birth, growth, ability to find its own food, seek mates, reproduce and support their offspring to get to pass on their genetic design code to the next generation. Now, that's not random. It's clearly a filtered design process. Now, can we apply these same principles to design? If you create designs in a genetic form, you can then create random variations by tweaking the driving design parameters in CAD, as you can see from the boards. Generating designs is the easy part, but not many people realize this because they haven't got there yet. There's too much talk about generative designs, but they are really hard to find. Generating designs is actually quite easy. Geniform will get you there with a single click. But then you will have a new problem. Too much design. You create for yourself a problem of selection. Now, this is a problem that nobody really knows how to crack. There are two approaches to this. One is optimization and the other is exploration. One is numerically driven and the other is designer driven. One is suitable for engineers as it is driven by clear numerical goals and the other is more suitable for designers as it's driven by ever evolving conditions throughout the design process. In one, the decisions are often simplistic and numerical and in the other they are much more complex and are made on visual representation. Engineers need models to analyze whereas designers keep evolving the model and need to make decisions well before the design is settled. Optimization processes are automated and exploration processes are designer driven. Most importantly, engineering processes are highly structured and 
real life design processes are chaotic. There are many methods of optimization. The main issue with optimization is that, that in order to optimize you have to design first. What happens if you don't have a design? What happens if a job is to design the design? But then there's an even more difficult problem. To optimize you have to have numerical criteria and explain it to a computer in a language that it can understand. Can you explain what is beautiful mathematically? So, how do you evaluate good design? We assume that you know it when you see it. That design essentially is about emergence. We know that a good part of decisions in design are non-numerical. But most importantly, we assume that you are the driver of all the design decisions. Geniform does not dictate or attempt to alter your work processes. You can jump in and out of it. Geniform is designed to support you by not hindering your creative design process. It requires you to do the least. Geniform does not demand that you rationalize your thought processes. It is not asking you to numerically define what is important because in early stage design you just cannot do that. Now let me explain how Geniform works. You first generate designs and then filter these designs through various criteria so you can pick amongst the best solutions. The selection is entirely yours and is not driven by a single numerical criteria. The final selection is done by a combination of filters. You don't have to set end goals. As you can see, Geniform works in a very simple way. There's no major secret behind Geniform. It's a very simple program that can generate random values between limits that you set. It's currently about 300 kilobytes. Perhaps it's a program that you can write. Perhaps it's like a virus that injects newly generated values into your CAD package. Your CAD package does most of the work. Geniform injects variations into it. That's all there is to Geniform. We hope you are now ready to turn your computer into a creative partner. Thanks for watching.